Morning, Saints. How y'all doing? All right, we got three of y'all that are happy. The rest of y'all, welcome. Uh, if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Pastor John, and I want you guys to have a seat this morning. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit special. We got some saints back, and I want them to come and tell us about their trip. Uh, just as they're making their way up here, I want to tell you a little bit about both of these young ladies. Uh, we have uh, Miss Susan and we have Miss Leanna. As they make their way up here, say hi. I didn't say that. Y'all, oh, hey. We doing oh, hey? Okay, oh, hey, auntie. Hey, auntie. Yeah, there we go. Little Black Panther. Little Black Panther ministry. Here we go. Okay. Um, so if you don't know, these ladies have been traveling the world. Uh, they have been traveling the world, and I'm going to let them tell you more about it. They were in Uganda and Kenya. Uh, if you've been here the last couple of weeks, you have seen the pictures, the videos. Um, um, ladies, just so you know, I told them you probably won't come back. Um, and so uh, we, we, we threw that picture. We actually made a little graphic and everything for you. Um, and so uh, it has been amazing to text back and forth the pastors over there. Um, and I'll tell you more about what I've done. But as, uh, as we do around here, we want you to share what God is doing in your life. And so I'm going to hand the mic over to these ladies, step out of the way. And we just want to be able to hear what God has done in them over the last two weeks. Two weeks. So. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. We got to do this. We got to get this right. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. That is his nature. They finish with that is in his nature, which is a theological statement that we don't add. So I think we need to bring that because that helps them understand it is in God's nature to be good. So praise the Lord for the adventure God allowed us to go on. Uh, six months ago, I, on the plane, I read a journal entry I made on September 30th that God would open a door for me to go to Africa and uh, he did, and I praise God. It uh, fulfills a lifelong dream. Uh, there were five men that I connected with online, which sounds kind of weird, connecting with men online. <laughs> <laughs> but these are all pastors who were crying out to God for connection with people who would have a heart to uh, join them in ministry. Uh, we've spent two weeks visiting uh, these pastors, three of them in Kenya, two in Uganda. We traveled hundreds of miles on crazy roads with a maniac driver in uh, Uganda. But what we experienced was uh, love and a passion for Christ, uh, hearts that are breaking for both spiritual food and uh, nourishment for their bodies. Um, the poverty we experienced over there is nothing that we can even imagine here. A uh, friend that we met said, even your poor people in your country have shoes and socks on their feet. Uh, we saw a lot of sickness. We saw situations because of the conditions there that won't change for them until something changes. So, um, it was a fact-finding mission, um, and I learned a lot. There's questions that were answered, but a lot of questions that remain unanswered. I'm excited for what God has stirred up in me to do in the future. I'm excited for Pastor John and just the passion he's expressed, too, as uh, we go along on this journey. Thank you. Well, it was just uh, maybe 90 short days ago that I learned that uh, Susan was planning to go to Africa and challenged her to let somebody go with her. <laughs> He's like, you can't go by yourself. And she was very gracious. And so I guess this is, as you would say, ordained from the foundations of the earth. <clears throat> it has been an amazing journey. Um, this is what I do best. <laughs> Um, you hear stories and you just wonder are they true? What's it really like? Are they people like us? 
can I wrap my mind, my heart around the degree of suffering? And I just feel like God has just scratched the surface and showing us what that looks like. I can't tell you where it is, but a scripture came to surface in the last few days in Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount when, when your brother begs of you, you're required to give. And I think back over my own life, people I love, including my family, asking things from me. How readily was I to share, able to share, willing to share? And we had a lot of people ask a lot of things of us on this trip. But it was the key to sharing the truth of God's love. And if that's what's required of us, we must do, because Christ did. Amen. I remember thinking about fourth or fifth grade and learning about a Pocot tribe in Africa and how vicious they were, and they dressed in the, the uh, great decorated Maasai tribe ways and had forgotten about it. And the uh, third pastor we met said, I've been going up there. I want to take you. And it blew me away. We got to go up there and see this tribe who has a vicious history, killing their own and killing others. And we met with them. We were welcomed with song and dancing, these beautiful children. And they welcomed us under their trees where they held church and shared the gospel. And they would just look in our eyes. We got to dance with them and jump, their vertical jump dance. They're so excited to know about Jesus. And just you can see them absorbing and growing. And we experienced this time and again. That was just special because it wasn't on our itinerary. And to think that that door opened because God ordained it to open. And there are multiple opportunities. We saw every place we went multiple opportunities. Only God can meet those needs. So I challenge you in the days ahead as you hear more, we'll try to get a presentation together. Each and every place we went and, and those that were extended, extended us beyond what we had planned, please open your hearts, get them ready, get the soil of your hearts ready because God wants to use this church. He already has. He'll continue to do so. I just challenge you to be ready when he calls you. I just thank you for supporting us <clears throat> with your prayers, with your gifts, with your love, because we got to share it with them, and they send back all those greetings. Thank you. Greet the people there at Soma. They want to, they, if they could be here, they would jump across the sea and be here because they feel the love. They want to be a part of us. If you could, I don't know that your heart can hold all, that, <laughs> all of this, but know that it's true. We, have, we serve a mighty God. Amen. His love knows no end. I thank you again. And praise God. It's just been an amazing journey. So I know I, I've heard this whole time a lot of kids in the room. So I want to get the kids that are asleep to wake up and look at me real quick. All the kids, I want you looking up here. The reason why we adults do what we do is so we can prepare the way for you guys. And I know a lot of you guys are like, well, I don't even know about this Jesus stuff. We prepare the, we're preparing and plowing the ground for you. Because the stuff that we're going to start as a church through these two ladies and, and the vision that God has given them to go. And, and my heart has been changed just by the, the interactions that Heather and I had via, via uh, uh, FaceTime at Odark 30 in the morning. Uh, pastors called me at 2 in the morning wanted to talk and pray with me. I've never met the guy. He wants to talk and pray with me because he felt the Lord felt a, a, a hard word, which it was a hard word that morning and, and him wanting to pray over me and make sure that I was well uh, and, and the interactions we've had. We plow this ground for you guys so that you can do what the Lord has called all of us to do and that's to be prepared to do his work all across the world. Everyone is